Okay, so we're about to make the cucumber shark. You need a few things for this. One, you need a big chef knife with a wide blade. Uh, you need a paring knife with a small nimble blade. And you need a container of water large enough to float a garden cucumber. The reason you want to float the cucumber is so that you know where the heaviest point of it is and you can have that part down so that when you finish carving your shark it will naturally float upright. You also want a small container, I'm using a bowl here, to scrape off your blade because you're going to have little bits of cucumber stuck to it and it's a lot faster just to brush it off than it is to pick the pieces off the knife. So I'm going to now hand the camera to my assistant so that I can have both hands free. Okay, now we're going to point over here at the cucumber which is floating in the water. And I'm going to grab it by the sides so that I know that the heavy side is down. And bring it over here over the cutting board. Bring the camera down. Okay. So. Make sure your fingers are low on the sides of your cucumber so you don't accidentally get into them with your knife. And carefully saw off a broad strip off the bottom of your cucumber. Now it's important to do this all in one piece because you're gonna use this later to make your fins. And we're going to look at the bottom and make sure it is nice and flat so that when we set it down it's not going to roll. Nice and stable. Now on the end opposite the stem, I don't know what we call this little dot on the end, but we're going to cut just below that, again with the big chef knife. And we're going to go down oh, about an inch or two on either side. And now we are done with the big chef knife. And we're picking up the paring knife, holding it kind of like a, a pen or a paintbrush. Just, uh, I find with the middle finger along one side, the index finger on the back, and the thumb on the side of the handle, it makes it very stable, gives you a lot of fine motor control. Then we make a small cut, and then do another one at about a 90 degree angle to that and we take out a little V of cucumber. Okay. Yep. So that's what we're starting with. Now we're gonna do this a whole bunch of times to make our top row of teeth. I think when we edit, I'm going to see if I can find a fast forward feature on my software because this is boring stuff to watch. Now here we've got a piece of cucumber out on the knife. You just brush that on the edge of your dish to get rid of it and that way you don't have to waste any time trying to shake it off or flick it off or brush it aside. If the piece just flicks out, that's great. If it sticks to the knife, just brush it off on the side of your bowl. And you can see I'm using the tip of the index finger of my other hand to guide the back of the knife. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here but it does give you that extra bit of control. Again, don't touch the front of the knife because that's the sharp bit and that makes owies. And again, you want to do about a 90 degree angle here, evenly spaced over and over again. I don't really have anything new to say here, but I'm just filling up time. Then we get to the end of the slip that we've made and that means we're going to go around to the other side now. Here I've got the angle a little bit wrong, so the piece isn't coming out as smoothly as it otherwise would. If we have a nice even angle, the pieces come out really easily. Okay, so now we have the top teeth all done. Now we're going to go back and do the other, the uh, the bottom row, and the way we're going to do this is continuing the line of the V's on top 
So we're basically taking uh, where we have a tooth here, we're going to make a matching V underneath it. So same size, same angle, just straight below, and this will give us the illusion of huge gaping jaws, even though we're actually have the top and bottom are actually touching just inside the teeth. And remember, when you're making a garnish of any kind, it's better to make the cut too small than too big, because if you make it too small, you can make it a little bigger later. But if you make it too big, well, you've got to be pretty creative at that point to work around that. Now here's where we got that angle of that last tooth wrong to start with, so I'm making this one matchingly wide on this angle here just so it looks like that is a gap where that upper tooth goes And now we're coming back over here to continue the bottom teeth on the opposite side. See, I've got this angle a little bit wrong, so I'm going to cut a little bit more off of this tooth, but not too much, because otherwise I'm going to lose the tooth altogether. And that will just look bloody silly. And ta-da, the teeth are done. Now for the next step. First thing I'm going to do is clean up all of these teeth which are in my way. Okay, now we're going to do the gills. So we're going to put the shark on its side, or the shark to be, and we're going to cut almost straight down with only a very slight backwards lean, about a 80 five eighty nine degree angle sort of thing and we go in just about half an inch then we lean back on about a oh, 60 degree angle and just gently rock the blade side to side to collect to connect the points of the first cut that we made and that will give us a little wedge of cucumber to take out and again right behind it we're tilting just a little bit back towards us rock the blade in I'm going to lift this up so you can see how far the knife is actually going into the cucumber and again rocking on a slight angle to take that wedge out and we repeat this three times on each side being careful to apply gentle slow pressure this is why you want a really sharp knife because if you have a dull knife you'll go push 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 slip and go halfway through the cucumber and lose your gill so a really really sharp knife is important for this a sharp knife goes where you want it to go when you want it to go whereas a dull knife you push on it until it slips and then you accidentally cut off something you didn't want to cut be it part of your cucumber or part of your finger I'm going to widen that a little bit because I have a perfectionist streak, which is really more of an enemy than an ally in this sort of thing. And 
and the next gill and a rock and a lift and the next and this should be the last gill cut and there we go so gills are done now we need eyes so how you do your eye depends on the expression you want on your shark so I'm just going to start from a point at the back and curve around like so then start again it's like a teardrop shape I like to use but a teardrop shape when it's on its side gives it kind of a sinister look Nar. And again, curving up into the teardrop, starting back from the point and curving forward. And there we go. Fearsome and stuff. So now we're ready to do the tail. You want to start about a third of the way ahead of the stem. You're going to come in from an angle. Don't worry, you can't see it from here, but I will do it on this side first so that you can see better. Let's move the camera directly over the shark for this one. There we go. And again, we're starting about a third of the way up. We're going to cut in on a slight angle, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then when we get a little bit of the ways in, we're going to curve and then go straight down. So, then this will pull aside and you are going to see down at the bottom we're still a little bit connected so we just with the point of the knife retrace that and that comes off. Now we're going to be using this again later so we don't want to lose that. Now you can see here I've just barely got into the seeds. Uh, if you've done this perfectly you don't want to see the seeds at all because that means you're going a little too deep. So I've gone just a tiny bit too deep with this cut. So now switching hands and doing the other side. Fortunately, I'm ambidextrous. Those of you who are not will have to uh, do the opposite side with your off hand, which will make it a little bit more challenging. Can't you just turn it upside down? Uh, you can, but then you get kind of a wonky angle because you're a little bit narrower on the bottom than you are on the top because of the way we're doing the cut. Because we want it to kind of resemble a shark's body, the way it tapers at the back. I've gotten distracted and gone a little bit off kill here. There we go. Okay, so that's not my best work ever. This is how it should look. This is how it looks if you've gone a bit wonky and made a bit of a mess of it. Right, so now we need a place for the fins to go. So we're going to start about half an inch up from the bottom and cut a straight line parallel to the bottom then a slight angle away from it about 45 degrees and again down here about 45 degrees and then connect the two into a rhombus how often do you get to use the word rhombus in conversation especially in a garnishing video all right, and we would ideally like to remove this all in one piece just so that we can use it for parts later if we make mistakes. So the good thing about this design is it comes with a lot of spare parts. There we go. This is being a lot more stubborn than it usually is. There we are. So now we have a rhombus-ish hole. And we're going to repeat that on the other side. Is my hand blocking the way? Yes it is. So I will do this with my right hand. And we want it to be the mirror image on the other side. Oh, 
is once the fins are actually pushed inside, they are going to go all the way through the body of the cucumber. And that one came out much easier. Okay, now here's a part where you're going to be super, super careful because it's very easy to cut yourself. I'm going to hold this flat between my fingertips and my thumb. And I'm going to very slowly remove about half the thickness of this piece. So now you see in cross section, this is a much smaller, it's much narrower uh, than the entire piece of fin is. Uh, again, that's because these are going to be both going inside that slit that we've made earlier. And we want it so that it's not causing a huge bulge and breaking that bit off the bottom. We're going to repeat that on the other side. So we've got the bit that came from the end of the cucumber. That's going to stay intact, but the part that we hit cut off on that little angle, that's the part that we're going to thin and taper. So here again, slowly and carefully so we don't cut ourselves or chunk off a big piece of cucumber. And just like that. And that one goes in there. And this one goes in there. And we're going to give that just a little bit of a push so it squishes together. And now we see this little uh, hole that we've got here above the fin. Now this one's just about perfect, but this one I've got a little bit of a gap. So, see this piece that we took off earlier? We know that that fits because that came out of that hole. So we're just going to cut a little bit of a diagonal off here. Got that little diamond shape there. And that is going to exactly fit into that hole. Because it came out of that hole. And this will hold that fin in securely. And this fin over here, we didn't cut quite deep enough. So it's not actually reaching all the way across. There we go. And that one goes in just like that. Okay. So now all we remain, all we remain, all we have remaining are the tail and dorsal fins. So, I'm going to take a little curve off of here. And a much deeper curve off the other side. And that is going to be our dorsal fin. And then we're going to make the tail fin, which is going to be a little bit more narrow. And now we're going to cut a couple of slits in the back of the shark. And again, we want to remove this uh, piece of cucumber in one piece, just in case we need to use it for shims later. You can, uh, after you've done this a few times, you'll just get an eye for it. But the first couple of times you do it, you might want to actually make a little nick at the front and at the end so that you know that you've got the length of your fin correct. And that just wiggles in there. Now that one I've actually done just right, so no shimming is required. And now we come back here to do the tail. Now again, we're going to measure off the tail so that we don't go too far back or too far forward. Blink. Just bring that up over, over top of my... There we go.
Now you you could just cut a slit and then shove it in, but then you're going to have kind of a bulgy appearance and you may break the cucumber. So you want to actually remove a piece of cucumber that is almost exactly the width of the fin that's going to be going back in. And we tuck that in and I have a tiny little gap in front which is why we keep track of the pieces that we cut out. And wedge that right back in. And that's solid and secure. And ta-da, we have our shark. And, oops, he even floats in the bowl, right side up. He's gonna have a little bit of a slant because we've got one fin a little bit bigger than the other. But hey, that just helps you to see the other side better when it's floating in your punch bowl. And now you're ready for your Shark Week party.